The following program was produced by the United States Courts. Her academic advisor was less than supportive of her decision to pursue a law degree. I went back and I said, what does it take to get into law school? She says, no, I don't encourage that. You're just taking up a place a man needs and you're probably going to get married and you won't be working, so it would be a waste of uh, the university's efforts, he said. In 1951, Dimmick entered her law program with five other women. Classes were very competitive. Many students dropped out, including two of the five women. Dimmick began having doubts about her future as a lawyer, but then she met other women lawyers, including one who would become her mentor, Betty Howard. One day, Howard took Dimmick to divorce court for an eye-opening experience. She was surprised by the casual attitudes displayed by the male attorneys. I got out of there, I said, boy, I said, that doesn't look like a courtroom that I've seen in the movies or anywhere. They're not even standing up. She said, see, you could do that. I said, I could do a lot better than that. After graduation in 1953, Dimmick landed a job with the Attorney General's office in Olympia, which was just a few hours south of Seattle. The appointment was conditional. She had to pass the bar, which she did, but the announcement while exciting, was also sexist. I was water skiing in law school, and uh, I passed the bar exam, which was wonderful. The PI says, blonde water skier passes the bar exam. <laughs> you know? and that was always, it was always like it was one word. You know? And that was always how they referred to me, blonde barrister, you know, this and that. And in the Attorney General's office, it was the same thing. Well, I mean, it's just some, it's something for them to say. You know, they don't say it about the men. And in 1980, Dimmick made history. Dixie Lee Ray was the governor of the state of Washington, and she decided she was going to put a woman on the Supreme Court because we didn't have one. We had nine men forever and ever. Called me down, and I went down and talked with her. Then I was appointed, Dixie Lee Ray appointed me to the Supreme Court, and I was the first woman in the state of Washington on that court. Looking back on her career, Judge Dimmick does not see herself as a trailblazer or activist. She was simply a woman who wanted to be a lawyer at a time when that happened to be unusual. I'm sure that I was a forerunner for a lot of women. There weren't the opportunities in the law school as a graduate there was nobody in a big firm. Later on, one woman, after I was there, went to a huge firm. But all the rest of us went to government service or with our, with our lawyer husband, should we have one. And since that time, it's just been so heartening to see how it's developed and how the men are accepting it and the women are accepting it. And it's, you know, you're a lawyer, you're not a woman lawyer, like it used to be, a lady lawyer. You're just a lawyer, and that's how it should be, and that's how it's developed, in my opinion.